What is up everyone, this is Justin Wong and you guys been asking for a specific video for so long so I mean everyone knows me as a, a lame player you know I like to wait the time out it always goes to zero or something and it's true I love playing lame so this is gonna be a video topic about the art of lame and from just my perspective so I mean let's just get to it so first thing is I just love playing lame and it's not just in tournaments or like I'm playing because playing lame because I need to win it's really I really enjoy the defensive aspect of the game so if you guys see me play casuals or play online matches or play on my stream I will just lame it out like I I'm I have the the mental fortitude and also just find it fun to play lame even at casuals and I guess that's what people when people call me a try hard or anything but it's really really fun to me the fact that I have to play in this perspective and how to defend properly anti-air properly and just you know frustrate the opponent like I guess my fetish for playing lame is this like seeing that the person I'm playing against is getting frustrated and seeing them crack like that's just something that I really do enjoy and I know it might sound weird but it, it kind of like it kind of really like makes me enjoy uh, just fighting games even more because that's just how I naturally am. I'm just a safe, defensive, cautious person that likes to take no risk. And this is kind of what it is too. Like I just love playing it even during casual. I don't want to let loose and go crazy. Like I, I'm not about that. So that's kind of the first one. I just want to explain to you that I really love playing lame in general. Um, um, the next one is every character can be played lame. So I believe that you can play any character lame as possible. So if you guys remember me playing Rufus, like Rufus is aggressive, dive kick, happy character, but I played uh, Rufus so slow, uh, just only sweeps, you know, standing medium kick, crouching fierce, you know, waited for my turn to attack. And I feel like any character could be played like that. If you look at Fudo's Mika, uh, he doesn't really go too crazy. Um, you could play Birdie, super lame as well, just jab it out. Like all these characters that are really strong in offense, they can be also played just defensively as well. Every character has that one move that you could just spam over and over again. And that's considered, I would say, just a lame strategy because you could just spam this one particular technique and you know, you're not giving the opponent any type of reward or any type of attempt to take a risk where they need to get in so like you know i'm pretty sure you've seen many a times where like abigail who who can, who can really play aggressive and take a lot of these es command grabs risk when when he wants to close around he'll only press jab to minimize the risk you know so at that point he's playing lame right same same thing with just like like mika which is doing just standing medium punch same thing with just uh birdie doing crouching jab right like what and there are other characters as well that can play offense but play defense same thing with laura who just want to just do stand light kick for the stand light kick buffer into elbow right you could just literally just do that all day you don't have to play like aggressive command dash or anything like obviously it's gonna be their part of the character and also their strong suits but like i said any character can be played lame you just have to find a way add it into your game it might help especially in these really close tournament sets where you don't have that much life um next topic don't rush take your time even if you are losing there are 99 seconds on the clock the game is long you can really not rush take your time like even if you're in even if you're losing you're in a life deficit you have the, all the time in the world so i feel like the only time you should be worried trying to make a comeback is depending on the life so if you have over 50%, you should start worrying at 15 seconds, right? If you have 100%, you should be worrying at around 30 seconds, right? But before, but besides that, if it's like, you know, you have a 30%, the other person has a 30% life lead, and it's like 50 seconds left on the clock, chill, walk them down, look for some patterns, um, get them in the corner because they might not want to be in the corner. See what pokes they like to throw out see what like type of because at that point the opponent is trying to just hit you with just little tiny normals just kind of like get you frustrated and make you take these risks where you have to so like you know stuff like that just 
wait it out. You don't have to really rush in. You're eventually going to get your turn, get your little opportunity of a risky attempt because at that point, you should only go for like one risk attempt because technically, you might be dead if you go for multiple because they might defend properly and their defensive mechanism, their defensive like just mindset is heightened because they have the life loop, because they see that you're coming in too hard. So take your time. A bit, like sometimes people don't really like playing lame. There's, there's times where people want to play lame with me, but for some reason, after like 30 seconds, they want to dash. They want to jump. They want to swing for defenses. And a lot of times people let people kill themselves for that. So yeah, don't rush. Take your time, even if you're losing all the time in the world. You only have to worry when the, talk, the clock really goes under 20 seconds, really, in my opinion. So, next topic. No need to pressure in the corner. And I feel like there's so many matches that I've seen where you have a 90% life lead. And then you miss your meeting in the corner. You get back thrown. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I would say the perfect example... Uh, was Punk versus Problem X. You know, Punk was about to beat Problem X at Dreamhack Montreal, and then he missed his meeting. He got back thrown against Abigail. GG. And I, you know, I see that with Mika. How many times Mika woke up low jab, strong into uh, Irish whip in season one in the corner? All the time. Abuki, you know, quick rise, back, back rise in the corner. You know, there's so many times where people miss their meetings and they have such a huge life lead that they lose because of that. And I'm, I'm like, so in my general rule, like let's say if I'm fighting against Urian and I, and I knock you down the corner and you don't have that much life, I'm, I'm walking back. I'm gonna dash back because I don't wanna be put in that position where, you know, maybe I might miss my meaty or he, he'll just do wake up low, short, low forward after after he blocks a, um, a, an attempt from me, and then, then I have to guess on the ages. He's gonna throw me. Now, he's gonna hit me through the mirror. Now, I'm in the corner, right? And he's gonna probably put up another mirror, do some EX move, and now I have to guess again. No, that's bad, you know? So, no need to pressure when you're in the corner. Just stay mid-screen, stay where it's safe. The corner is the danger zone, and especially if you don't need to make a comeback, you don't need to put them in the corner or, and keep them there because all you need is a few normals mid-screen, even two normals mid-screen. That's game, because they have to take the risk to make a comeback, remember that. So next topic, stay at a range that makes you feel comfortable. So obviously there are a lot of like scramble attempts where like, you know, you do like, you know, EX, wake up EXDP for example, and then you dash in or you do sweep and then you dash in and then like they quick rise and press a button. You know, those are scrambles. You never want to be put in a scramble, right? Scrambles are just situations where it just doesn't really work out, right? Like, because if you're literally making a 50-50 at that point in terms of just like neutral right here. You don't want to fight right here. You never want to fight right here because, you know, wake up jab, grab, wake up this, you know, wake up low forward. like. Stay at a range where you feel comfortable and you have control. Even if though that it's not a meaty in terms of like you getting a, a grab attempt or a frame trap attempt, stay at a range where the other person has no reason to wake up DP, no reason to wake up super. You know, stay at a range where there is like minimal risk and just poke. Get your great life. Like, why do you need to go in? Why is the norm is to finish the game around as quickly as possible, right? You don't want to like do that. You don't want to just wake up into a, you know, a wake up button into V trigger into, well, see you in the second or third round or maybe the second game, you know? So it's one of those things where just, you know, stay at a range. So sort of like Karen against Mika, for example, like I would just stay, oh, I'm a V skill. I'm a stand medium kick. Oh, you drop kick V reversal. You know, I don't want you close to me. There's characters where you don't want them close. Obviously, you want to fight characters that, like, 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 like. Let's say you fight Dawson, you want to be here for sure. But other characters, like, that does not like Dawson, you want to be like right here all the time, right? Even if your character doesn't have normals, like, there's gonna be times where you have a normal to beat their long range normal, like Mika, for example, right? So it's just one of those things where stay at a range where you feel comfortable because. The more comfortable you feel at that range, the more confident you are in the neutral and you don't have to worry about like these 
these situations where like a random dash or random jump because you you gave yourself so much space to think about that like you know this is your bubble and people can't disrupt your, disrupt your bubble when you stay at a range where you feel comfortable because you're going to be more confident now don't be scared next one is don't be scared when pressured so obviously this is like a, a, a math game math fighter 5 where you have to understand the frame data and everything so there are times where you're gonna get you're gonna get pressured you're gonna you know there's gonna be an opponent's turn where you're gonna get pressured and you know it's just one of those things where you just you know you know the legend says just take the throw because if you take the throw they have to make another read on their part right there's no more throw loops in the game it's all pseudo throw loops so you know looking for those situations really really help a lot right so a lot of times you know I'm gonna take the throw. I don't wanna take the frame shot. I don't wanna take the shimmy, right? So it's just one of those things where you wanna make a calculated guess because sometimes people are greedy. People are not comfortable at just at grabbing you 500 times around. Unless you're like me or Punk that, that abuses that system and kind of like forces you to mentally break down to, to, to just tech the throw. But I mean, there are times where me and Punk play and we'll just win a whole match against each other just from throwing because we, we, we don't want to reach 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 for the heavens you know we don't want to reach that so really just don't get nervous don't be scared when you're being pressured because eventually there is a gap right they made it for in, in turn, season three and now season four where there is a gap in like these in this offense so you just have to really study and when if you study the numbers don't lie the numbers don't lie right focus on small damage and big damage right that's another topic so i am a very big fan of focus on small damage and big damage right just because it's one of those situations where let's say you want to close out a round right i'm a not right i want to close it around so i don't need to press strong i don't need to press fierce i can just press jab right because it's one of those things where the opponent's gonna try to take a risky attempt and if you're in that intense situation they have v-trigger you know you have to worry about jump and you know they might jump over your heavy punch they might jump over your medium punch they might jump over a normal they might jump over a fireball right and or they might just like randomly dash right and you won't have and you won't be able to react with a medium punch you won't be able to react with a heavy punch you know you won't even be able to react to a throw but i like to focus on the small damage over big damage i consider that as like free damage because there are a lot of times where you can get this jab, for example, and take what, like 60 points of health, 40 points of health. But, you know, the people might think, oh, it's not enough. But the thing is, it is like you're getting damage off, you know, you're 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 putting you're, you're pushing them back so you can have your space in neutral again. So what's the downside? Oh, it's not enough damage, you know. But it um, it gives them more attempts to risk. Yeah, it does give it does give you more attempts of risk because they're like, oh, it's just a jab. I'm eventually gonna get in if I do a dash or jump. But there are games where they can't afford that. Let's say if they have 10% of health left, can they take that small damage? I don't think so. I really don't think they can. They can. They cannot take that small damage at that point just because they can't afford it. And even at like high health. They shouldn't, they, they, they'll think they afford it, but eventually it those jabs will hit you, will hit you enough where you're like, ow, oh, that, I took like 10 jabs, man, that, that's like already 30, 40% of my, like 30% of my life already, like gone. Now I have to really like think about it, right? So focus on the small damage or big damage. Big damage is always nice, but if you cannot react with a medium on a dash or anti or properly, then really, like that's why the anti air jabs were there. Like people used anti air jabs all day in season one because of how good it was, right? How useful it was. It's the same thing for dash. You have a jab there. Check the dash with a jab. Doesn't have to be a full combo. Some characters can get a combo off of a jab. It might not be enough, but it's 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 enough to send them back full screen or back to the position where they were, and you get to play the neutral again because they're frustrated. Why did they dash in the first place? Because they were mad. They want to get in. They want to mix your shit. So, yeah, I would say focus on the small damage and big damage at times, a lot of times, actually. Now, I'll say the last topic is take the safest route. Do not gamble, right? And what I mean by that, I mean, like I said earlier, take the throw. 
take the safest route. Just because there are a lot of times where people make a comeback and it's because they press the button. It's because they wake up DP, right? At like 70, 90%. You could take that risk, sure. But that's 70% of your stun, maybe 30, 40% of your life gone. And now you might be, you, you might be one back throw away from stun. And that's game. So, if you just take the grab and you block the frame traps, how many times they have to guess right on getting you stunned? Right, you have to think about that type of stuff. Sure, just get grab, just get grab. It's annoying, but if you keep it up here, that eventually a frame trap is gonna happen, and if you're able to see the gap and react to it, because you wanna concentrate it, concentrate on the walk as much as possible. Because a lot of times, a lot of characters cannot just do grab, uh, walk up grab. You could press like a, a, a three a three frame button or a four frame button, right? And obviously you're scared of, well, what if they press a button? But that has a button right away, you know? So you really have to pay attention fully after the grab to just to kind of minimize the risk. So a lot of times, do not challenge when you're in a 50-50 position. Like to say you're fighting against Karen and she does and she and she makes you block standing light kick. Do not challenge. Like if do not put yourself in a 50-50 situation. Like, oh, is she gonna frame trap or grab? Just take the safest route, especially if you can afford a life. The only time where this method doesn't work is if you're about to be stunned or you're about to die. Because then it's do or die. But if you have life to afford to, to take a grab, take a Take that, just do it. But other than that, these are my opinions, or these are my topics of how, what I look into when I play lame in Street Fighter V. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned something. Um, hopefully I didn't bore you out. Um, I know I done some lame things in my life. I like lame things in general. I mean, you guys know that, but that's just kind of who I am. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe to the video. If you guys have any uh, more questions about defense and playing lame, please leave the comments below and all that good stuff. And, you know, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.